Now that we've looked at some of the properties for integration, I've got the formal definition here of an integral over an interval AB being the area under that curve. And then following that definition are a few general properties. It says that the integral from a to b of x dx is equal to b squared over 2 minus a squared over 2. We're going to use that momentarily. Then it says the integral from a to b of c, c is just a constant, times dx, is going to be c times b minus a. And in all of these, <clears throat> actually in the first and the third case, we're assuming that a is less than b. This middle one can work either way. And then the last one says the integral from a to b of x squared dx is equal to b cubed over 3 minus a cubed over 3. I'll give you a more generalized definition that you can use for x raised to just about any power in um, just a, a few minutes. It'll actually be on another video. But we're going to look here at the integral from 1 to the square root of 2 of x dx. So we're in this first case up here. So it says that the answer is going to be b squared, in this case b is the square root of 2, so b squared over 2 minus a squared over 2. So that's going to be the square root of 2 squared over 2 minus 1 squared over 2. The square root of 2 squared is simply 2, so you have 2 over 2 minus 1 over 2, and subtract and you end up with 1 half. So the area under that curve from 1 to the square root of 2 is just going to be 1 half. Now sometimes you might want to find the average value of a function over an interval. An average is also called mean. So to find the mean or the average value of a function over an interval, we have this formula here. The average value of the function is 1 over b minus a. Okay, so you're taking 1 over the width of that interval times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So we're going to do an example of this to show you exactly how this works here. It says find the average value of the function f of x equals x squared minus 1 over the interval from 0 to the square root of 3. So in the picture here in the graph, the function is the red curve. The left endpoint of that interval, 0, I've marked with the green line, and the right endpoint, the square root of 3, is with the red line. So we're looking at the curve here between those two values, and we want to find the average. So just using that formula above, the average value of this function is equal to 1 over the square root of 3 minus 0 times the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of that function, x squared minus 1. Now, using one of the properties that were on the first page of the notes, I could separate out this into two integrals. So 1 over the square root of 3 minus 0 is just 1 over the square root of 3, and we'll come back to that later. But I can look at this as the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of x squared dx minus the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of 1 times dx. Then, using what was on the previous page, I'm going to use what was here in the middle and what's here in the bottom, we can go ahead and work these out. So starting with the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of x squared dx, 
that's going to be x cubed over 3. Um, so in this case, it's going to be the square root of 3 cubed over 3 minus 0 cubed over 3. And then the second one, the integral from 0 to the square root of 3 of 1 dx is just going to be 1 times the width of that interval. So it'll be 1 times the square root of 3 minus 0. Now, what's nice is whenever you have zeros, they just wash away. They're 0. They don't do anything. So what we're actually left with here is not a whole lot. The square root of 3 cubed is going to equal 3 times the square root of 3, and that's over 3. So these 3s are going to cancel, so we're really just left with the square root of 3. This is 0. Over here, negative 1 times the square root of 3 is just minus the square root of 3. Negative 1 times 0, again, that's gone. So inside our brackets here, all we have is the square root of 3 minus itself. So the brackets just equal 0. So we have 1 over the square root of 3 times 0, which is just going to be 0. So that says that the average value of the function over this interval is 0. So again, the average value is going to be the average y value is just going to be 0. That definition <coughs> is written as the mean value theorem. And what the mean value theorem says is that if f is continuous on this interval from a to b, then there's going to be some x value c where f of c is going to equal that midpoint value. That's the mean value theorem. And I'm going to stop this video here. We're going to pick up with the fundamental theorem of calculus.